What it do, what it do? It's your boy Teddy Rose back from the dead coming at you with a new video. And I know it's been a minute that I've shown off any of my crazy creations to you guys, but I'm officially back. And today we're talking about a game that I was working on for about three weeks when I was in between jobs in 2019. Now, I know you guys don't know this, but I'm a huge fan of the Super Smash Brothers series. In particular, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Like, I've always wanted to make my own Super Smash Bros. style fighting game and have actually made a couple of engines in the past to see what my Smash game would look like. But the projects were always just super overwhelming with all the different high quality animations I'd have to make and pretty much do it all by myself. And eventually those projects would just like collapse in on themselves when I got burnt out. And then I remembered this cute little Smash game made by Dan Fornace, Super Smash Land. I was like, imagine this game, but with actual smash mechanics. I'm talking air dodge, like ledges, get up attacks, special moves, everything. And in those three weeks, I came up with the project that I'm about to show you right now. Super Smash Bros. Pocket. So first things first, let's talk about the gameplay. I made this game in three weeks, so Falco is the only playable character in the game. So with this one character, what can you do in this game? Well, everything you can do in a regular Smash game. You have your jabs and your tilts, your smash attacks, your specials, and you can even shield, roll, spot dodge, air dodge. But that's just all the basic stuff. Let's get to the advanced mechanics. You have your moonwalk. If you press forward and perform a half circle backwards with your stick fast enough, your character will move backwards while facing forward. This is known as a moonwalk in the regular Smash games. The only game that you were able to do this in was Super Smash Bros. Melee, and this was known as the Moonwalk. The next one is L Cancel. For those of you who don't know what this is, you have to press the shield button 11 frames before you land on the ground while doing an aerial attack. Upon landing, however long your character's land animation is, if you perform this technique, that time frame will be cut in half. This was a feature that was in both Super Smash Bros. 64 and also Super Smash Bros. Melee, though the timing and how they acted were slightly different depending on the game. Wave Dash This next mechanic is a mechanic that appeared only in Super Smash Bros. Melee and I could not make a Smash game without including Wave Dash. For one thing, it really makes the platform movement a lot more smooth and it's just really fun to do and having good platform movement is something that is necessary in a platform fighter. So you're probably thinking, what is a wave dash? Well, what you do is you jump and on the frame that you leave the ground, you air dodge diagonally into the ground, thus causing your character to slide over. Now let's get into the character's design. This Falco, I want it to feel like melee Falco with a mix of Smash Ultimate. So with my Falco, I gave him a mix of his melee attacks and also his smash ultimate attacks. So let's get into them. Let's start with his aerials. Neutral air. His neutral air is from smash ultimate. It has multiple hitboxes on it and the first few are soft hits and the last hitbox is a strong hit that sends your opponent away. Forward air. His forward air is from smash ultimate as well. It functions just like his neutral air. It has multiple soft hits and has a strong hit at the very end sending you away. Both moves are really good for dragging your opponent to the ground and setting up for combos. Up air. His up air is an exact replica of his up air from Smash Ultimate. It has a big hitbox going upwards that is really well for juggling your opponents. It doesn't have many active frames, but it covers a lot of space. Down air. His down air is ripped straight out of melee. It's a very strong hitbox that works really well on the ground and also in the air for combos. And it works really well as an edge guarding tool as well. It's a long lasting hitbox that gets weaker the longer that it's out. Back air. His back air is ripped straight out of melee as well. It's a long lasting hitbox that gets weaker the longer it's been out and it's a very strong kill move. 
It also works really well in combos as well. Forward Smash His forward smash is taken straight out of Smash Ultimate. It has one huge hitbox and deals a lot of knockback. Down Smash His down smash is the same as it was in Melee and Smash Ultimate. It's a quick downward attack that sends opponents off to the side. Up Smash His up smash is taken from Ultimate as well. It has a soft hitbox and a strong hitbox. It's pretty big and works very effectively as an anti-air. It's also a pretty strong kill move as well. Forward Tilt His forward tilt is taken straight out of melee. A quick hitbox that extends in front of you and has decent knockback. Down Tilt his down tilt is taken straight out of melee. It's a quick attack that hits very low and sends at a very high angle. It works really well as a kill attack. Up tilt. His up tilt is taken straight out of Smash Ultimate. It has a soft hit and a strong hit. It's very useful as a combo starter and also a combo extender. It has a huge hitbox as well and it functions as a useful anti-air. So you're probably wondering, how does all this mess together in gameplay? Like, can you still do cool combos and cool things? Well, yeah. Check this out. As you can see, you can still chain together some mean combos, but that was his highlights from games. I want to show you what the game flow looks like in a match. So I invited a friend over who plays Super Smash Bros on the same level as me, and we played some games together. Here's a couple stocks from the games that we played. What? Oh, that way he off the platform! There are other mechanics in this game that were not listed in this video. Let me just list some of them on screen right here. All of you avid Smash fanatics will know what all of these are, so here they are. But enough of this stuff, let's take a look at the menus. So here's the main menu. You can't enter the single player menu. However, I did create one single player mode that I will get into in a second. So let's check out the character select screen. You can create tags like a regular Smash game, so let's make one real quick. Then you hit the start button and you choose between three stages. We have City Escape, Dreamland, and Pokemon Stadium with actual transformations as you saw in some of the gameplay. All right, in our options menu, you can change the music volume and sound effects. You can play the game in either full screen or windowed. And here you can change your controls. So if you want B to be your attack button, go ahead. If you want A to be your special button, go ahead. If you want to jump with the Z button, 
go ahead. It's up to you. You can set them however you want. I mean, I'd never play like that, but I mean, I've seen people who play Smash Ultimate. Y'all play with some weird control schemes, so go nuts. <laughs> and last, we have the vault. And in the vault, I hadn't made trophies yet. However, the replay engine had been made. So you click load replay and you'll see this folder here that says recent. It will have every game that you've ever played listed here. It has the date, the time, and the characters that were played. Also, if you played with the tag, it will have your tag listed there in the name file. This makes it easy to find whatever replays that you're looking for. So let's say your practice partner came over one day and you played with him for a little bit and then you played with some other random people. When you're going through the replays, if he played with his tag on, you'd be able to find all the games that you guys played together. Now let's go back. If you look at this folder here that says replays, that's where all of your replays save. So let's go ahead and open one of these. So, in the replays, there's a lot of options here. We have slow motion, we have fast motion, you can skip 10 seconds ahead at a time, or you can skip 10 seconds behind. I added that function just in case you wanna skip through the video quickly to find a certain clip, you could do that. Like, if on the last dock you did some crazy finisher, you could skip there in a couple seconds. The slow-mo is so that you can look at situations where you think maybe you shouldn't have gotten hit, or maybe something should have connected, you can look at it in slow motion and see why that didn't hit. Also, I created the slow motion and fast motion so that you can make cool little clips here. So let's go ahead and make a little clip here. Let's find something cool in this replay and let's make a little clip. All right, so here we go, let's use this. All right, so let's add some slow-mo on the wall jump. Freeze when we land the down air. All right, continue slow-mo and speed up. And boom, we have a clip. Then you just take that, add some music or something to it, some video effects, and bam, you have a clip there. just for you to create clips and also for you to see why something didn't work or like look at areas where you messed up and where you could have done something better like I wanted it to be like used for like multiple things last we have race to the finish if you look above Falco there's a locked door the way that this race to the finish works is that you have to get through the course and grab the key then you backtrack to the beginning to unlock the door and escape but yeah let's get through this so, as you see here, there's doors and switches to open them. I forgot to put an arrow there telling you to jump across there. Yeah, this is definitely unfinished. So far, so good. And there's the key, but it's behind a locked door. So let's find the switch. And boom, the door should be open now. All right, and let's backtrack through the map. And bam, that's race to the finish. And that's my crappy Smash game that I made in a couple weeks while I was waiting to start my new job. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you want to support the channel, consider subscribing to my Patreon. You get videos a little early before they release there. Also, do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or friend who's a gamer and has a birthday or anniversary coming up and you want to get them something? Well, why not get them a personalized game built from the ground up about some inside joke or about your relationship? Just click the link in the description for Teddy's game request form and you fill it out there and for a fee, you can have a game built for the ground up whether it be for your anniversary or for a friend or for their birthday, they'll have their own personalized game. Again, thank you all for watching this video and I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. My feelings were hurt so bad if everyone who watched this video did not subscribe. Like just click the button, it's not that hard. Please. <laughs>